What are the best Star Wars games to enjoy before Outlaws? Later this month, the open world Star Wars game I've been waiting for since I was born finally gets released. But there have been incredible Star Wars games for years. So let's see which ones change the franchise forever. I'm Eric, welcome to Utini, and today we're going over the best Star Wars games to enjoy before Outlaws. We are two weeks away from the release of Star Wars Outlaws and the hype has never been higher. I mean, come on. This is a true open world Star Wars game with smugglers and syndicates and heists and ship combat and possibly the cutest thing I have ever seen hanging out with us the whole time. It's going to be incredible and we have a whole bunch more videos surrounding the game coming your way. But for today, I want to take us back in time because the history of Star Wars games is one of the richest histories in all of gaming. It's filled with tons of adventures, tons of characters and tons of genres that encompass almost the entire gameplay landscape. And you know what? They deserve to be celebrated. So as we enter the final stretch before the release of our next favorite Star Wars game, let's take a walk down memory lane and check out some of our favorites from the past couple decades. George Lucas always loved speed. Even before he started making movies, George was in love with all kinds of racing, and once he got behind the camera, you can see that love blossom throughout the Star Wars saga, and even in his other projects like American Graffiti. So it's only natural that this love for speed and ships flowed into Star Wars games. And it did so beautifully in 1998 and 1999 with two absolute classics, Rogue Squadron and Pod Racer. Both of these games allowed you to feel the thrilling excitement of Star Wars vehicles, but each with their own spin. Rogue Squadron turned your N64 controller into a cockpit and allowed you to take control of one of the most iconic ship designs of all time, the X-Wing. By completing mission after mission where you would take down TIE fighters, probe droids, and more, you were able to conquer the skies and save the rebellion in the full glory of three-dimensional aerial combat. Now, Podracer took that element of speed and applied it a bit more literally by giving us a full-on arcade racing game set in the Star Wars galaxy. Building on one of the most thrilling sequences in The Phantom Menace, this game not only gave you access to the inner workings of the most dangerous sport in the galaxy, it also taught you the literal names of all the racers. I mean, come on. Do you really think I knew who Team Topaglius was before I tried out his pod? Not only did both of these games unlock the thrills of flying and racing for kids like me who were right on the cusp of rabid Star Wars fandom, they also showed that Star Wars games had the potential to break into different genres outside of pure adventure. But then again, sometimes it's really fun to just swing a lightsaber. Three years after we were zooming around in pod racers, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast put a lightsaber back in our hand in ways we had never experienced before. Even though the game was technically the third game in the Jedi Knight series that started with Dark Forces in 95, this game set new standards by giving protagonist Kyle Katarn what fans had wanted for nearly a decade, his own lightsaber. The implementation of lightsaber combat and force powers in Jedi Outcast was unlike anything we had ever seen. Because even though, yes, these abilities had technically been in some games before, like the previous year's Star Wars Obi-Wan, Jedi Outcast added a level of execution that, well, really made you feel like a Jedi as you played. Because after all, there's something so quintessentially awesome about wielding a lightsaber, isn't there? It's what you pretend you're doing with every wrapping paper tube when you're a kid, and who among us hasn't used the force on an automatic door? Jedi Outcast combined the childlike wonder of these abilities with thrilling arcade action and created a game that not only lived up to its predecessors, but surpassed them to set a new standard for what Star Wars fans could expect in the future. But then, Bioware went ahead and broke the mold completely. KOTOR, a nonsense word. Yet one that means the absolute world to millions of Star Wars fans as it reminds us of the glory that is Knights of the Old Republic. Released in 2003, this RPG put you inside the life of a Force user amidst the chaos of the Old Republic and combined extensive lore, fascinating companions, and revolutionary gameplay to tell one of the best stories in the history of Star Wars. So yeah, that's the basic pitch. But in all seriousness, KOTOR kind of changed everything. For the first time, your decisions inside a game altered the narrative of your own Star Wars story. You could choose to follow the light of the dark, you could control the fate of different characters you met along the journey, and you could even control which force powers you learned. Even though we can all admit you had to try out force lightning no matter what, right? Right? But regardless of the path you took, 
KOTOR validated your experience by making you feel like you were actively living within Star Wars and creating it. And that's not even talking about how fun it was. From the quest design, to the combat encounters, to the dialogue options, every part of KOTOR was just a blast. And all of that quality led directly into the sequel just a year and a half later. An insane turnaround in today's gaming standards. Without hyperbole, the release of Knights of the Old Republic was one of the most important moments not only in Star Wars gaming, but in Star Wars as a whole. And who knows, maybe we'll still get that remake someday. Now let's say you loved the RPG elements of KOTOR, but you'd love for it to be, well, a bit more massive. Well, in 2003, Star Wars gamers were granted this exact wish with Star Wars Galaxies, a sprawling MMO that came out a full year before World of Warcraft dominated the industry. Galaxies presented fans with a living, breathing Star Wars universe that fundamentally altered the ways in which you could explore the, uh, well, the, the galaxy. Nowadays, the premise of Star Wars Galaxies may seem a bit rudimentary, but when it came out, the possibilities were simply jaw-dropping. Whereas KOTOR allowed you to create your version of a singular character, Galaxies allowed you to create whatever type of character you wanted before carving out your own path within the original trilogy on planets like Tatooine, Naboo, Corellia, and even Dathomir. And if that wasn't intriguing enough, the game also became one of the biggest love letters to the EU the gaming space had seen up to that point, with characters like Thrawn and Mara Jade being referenced, and the excitement and expansion of Galaxies Galaxies continued for almost a full decade until servers shut down in 2011, exactly five days before the Old Republic went online. Now, the Old Republic didn't officially turn off galaxies or anything like that, but there was a clear passing of the torch when the Star Wars MMO of the moment jumped back in time a few thousand years. And even though Galaxies was a hit with tons of fans, the Old Republic began to stand out by its viability for those who preferred to play by themselves, a somewhat rarity for the burgeoning MMO market. And that's not even mentioning the cinematics. The cinematics for the Old Republic remain some of the most exciting pieces of Star Wars action we've ever seen. Despite being around for over a decade, these trailers contain positively electric action sequences and are still the template by which some fans judge all future lightsaber battles. And even though the player count of the Old Republic isn't exactly massive nowadays, and the narrative has faced its share of issues, there's still no denying the impressive longevity of a game that's still bumping out cosmetics to tie in with the Acolyte 13 years after its launch. Now, sometimes you don't need a massive game filled with thousands of players. Sometimes you just need your brothers by your side. Enter Republic Commando. Back in 2005, the first person shooter was king. Halo 2 had just changed the gaming landscape with dual wielding, Call of Duty didn't have a battle pass yet, and basically, life was just really great. So Star Wars decided to make it even greater by introducing us to Delta Squad. Republic Commando was a tactical first-person shooter that put you in the shoes of a squad of elite clone commandos during the height of the Clone Wars. You completed missions, issued orders, and engaged in ridiculously fun blaster combat all inside the HUD of a clone trooper. You, you just felt like a complete badass. And while this game absolutely took influence from other massively successful shooters in the space, things like tactical commands and infusions of prequel lore helped it stand out and create iconic moments of its own, as well as legendary characters like Scorch, who became so popular that he returned to canon on screen in The Bad Batch almost a decade later. Now, we can't go talking about shooters and the Clone Wars without addressing possibly the most famous word in the history of Star Wars gaming, Battlefront. Because Star Wars Battlefront just might be the definitive Star Wars gaming franchise. So starting back in 2004, Star Wars Battlefront contains four separate entries, and each one has expanded the series drastically, although everyone has their favorite. The first game introduced the general conceit of Battlefront by allowing players to take control of soldiers who went head to head to complete various objectives and battles throughout the original trilogy. The game was a ton of fun, but once we got a sequel, we realized how bare bones it really was. Battlefront 2 from 2005 is still considered the definitive Battlefront for quite a few gamers. It expanded the scope of the original game exponentially, thrust gamers into the Clone Wars, introduced story campaigns where you could take over the galaxy as different factions, and you could even play as a number of different Jedi. Add on to that the most satisfyingly epic multiplayer combat Star Wars had seen up to that point, and it's no wonder this game is still considered an absolute classic. And then there were the updates. 
In 2015, 10 years after Battlefront 2 conquered the industry, Battlefront went back to its original title and released a multiplayer-only first-person shooter experience. The game was relatively well-received, but there were a few game types that didn't quite land, and the sprawling nature of the original Galactic Conquest was sorely missed. 2017's release of Battlefront 2 was met with different issues as its launch was mired in loot box controversies, but once that got cleared up, the game ended up providing a nearly perfect Star Wars multiplayer experience. There were plenty of modes, the game received years of support, and the graphical upgrades were positively gorgeous. Add onto that a sincerely enjoyable single player story that brought new players into canon alongside old favorites, and this sequel ended up being one of the best additions to one of the brightest spots in Star Wars. One of the best parts of Battlefront is its incredibly fast pace of play. You're right on the field of battle, you're firing shots, flying ships, capturing points, it's electric. But what if you want to slow it down a bit and conquer the whole galaxy a different way? Well, that's exactly what we did in 2006 with the release of Empire at War. A real-time strategy game with Star Wars flair, Empire at War took the idea of conquering the galaxy and placed it on a massive scale. In this game, you weren't taking over planets as a single soldier or by capturing a single point. You were coordinating full battalions and armadas, seeing your domination grow turn by turn by turn, slow and steady, yet grand and epic. Empire at War also succeeded where a lot of other Star Wars games fall short by its embrace of the modding community. Sure, it was fun to command armies led by heroes from the movies, but the modding community added entire factions to the game from elsewhere in Star Wars, like Heir to the Empire's Grand Admiral Thrawn. It was this embrace of the fan community that allowed this game an almost unheard of longevity, to the point where it received its latest patch in 2023, 17 years after its initial release. But while some of these games embraced decades of tweaks and support to craft experiences for a multitude of gaming generations, some Star Wars games are simply perfect for the time in which they are made. They're exactly what the community wants, and they create iconic memories that last far beyond their final credits. Perhaps no game represents that better than The Force Unleashed. In 2008, The Force Unleashed launched by answering a simple question. How much fun would it be to truly embrace the dark side? By introducing a story where you got to play as Darth Vader's secret apprentice, this game set a new bar for the pure amount of power you can manipulate in a single Star Wars game, and it was awesome. We're talking force lightning, we're talking unbelievable lightsaber combos, we're talking force pulling ships out of the sky. It was unashamed, unapologetic fun. And because the main character was played by none other than the future Darth Maul Sam Witwer, it also featured one of the best performances in Star Wars gaming to create the ultimate package. The game's success led to a sequel just two years later, and combined, they left a legacy of fun, fluid gameplay that emphasized just how much power there is in the Star Wars galaxy and how blindingly fun it can be to wield it, even if you're on the wrong side for a while. But at the end of the day, Star Wars is about the triumph of good over evil, of heroes overcoming the overwhelming darkness and saving the galaxy no matter what. And if there's any game that tells the story of a singular hero rising through the power of the light to conquer the darkness of the galaxy, it's Jedi Fallen Order. In 2019, Jedi Fallen Order welcomed a brand new era of Star Wars gaming with the first single player only AAA title Star Wars had seen in quite some time. With the story of Cal Kestis, you got to play a fully integrated canon narrative that felt at times like you were acting out your own Star Wars film in a way that hadn't really happened before. The performances were top notch, the environments were rich, and even the gameplay was a step up from years before. In Fallen Order, and to a larger extent its sequel Survivor, the gameplay was on an entirely new level. Lightsaber combat was less arcade and more tactical, complete with different stances that used the saber in different ways. Traversal and force manipulation were both key parts of the game to help conquer platforming challenges and access new areas, and most importantly, you got to customize your very own lightsaber. And I mean really customize. The game also presented a level of realism and, well, legitimacy that almost felt foreign in other Star Wars games. There were new lore entries, characters that began popping up in other media, and it felt like you were taking part in the very fabric of the Star Wars canon, a feeling that I'm sure we'll be able to replicate quite nicely in Star Wars Outlaws. And finally, we cannot leave a conversation about Star Wars gaming without mentioning one of the most important part of its history, Lego. That's right, Lego. Since the first Lego Star Wars game released back in 2005, Lego games have been a staple of the Star Wars brand, which sounds absolutely wild if you've never played them. These are games where you walk around famous Star Wars locations as famous Star Wars characters doing famous Star Wars things, 
but everything is made of Lego. There have been six mainline Star Wars Lego games, and the gameplay throughout is pretty similar. You complete missions, collect bricks, fight enemies, and unlock new characters and levels so you can do it all again. It's not overly complicated, but you know what it is? Some of the most fun you'll ever have. And that's why Lego games, especially the Lego Skywalker saga that came out in 2022, deserve their place in Star Wars history. In an industry that has so many incredible games about the intense stakes of the galaxy or the pure amount of power you can wield, these games remind us that all of this, all of this, is supposed to be fun. And just because it's fun doesn't mean it's lesser. I mean, the final game had environments from every single saga film and more characters than some games on this list put together. I mean, where else are you going to find characters like Mr. Bones and R2KT? I'll tell you where. Lego. So many Star Wars games perfectly replicate the feeling of heroism and triumph. But these games, more than any other, remind us about the thrill of exploration, discovery, creativity, and innocence. And we can never lose that, no matter how many games we play. Star Wars Outlaws is just two weeks away. And I can't imagine being more excited. If you asked me to write out my ideal Star Wars game, this would be it. And after looking back at the incredibly rich history of Star Wars games that have come before, I have no doubt that we're in for another phenomenal chapter. But I know we couldn't cover everything, so let me know below in the comments which ones did you miss? Which Star Wars games were your favorites? And while you're there, go ahead and leave a like and a subscribe if you want to keep celebrating Star Wars with us. Until next time, may the force be with you.